Shalom. First and foremost, I want to give all praise, all honor, all glory to Yahweh Bahasham, Yahweh Shah, Bahasham Rakach Wadash. Double honors to the apostles and elders of Great Millstone for teaching me this truth according to the Bible through the spirit and power of Yahweh Bahasham, Yahweh Shah. And a sincere peace and salutation to all you hopeful of Le'aki out there pushing his word in all truth and sincerity, doing the work as Yahweh Bahasham, Yahweh Shah has created us to do. So he can wake up and seal the elect of the nation of Israel, which consists of you so-called blacks, Hispanics, and Native Americans, and you Israelites who are scattered amongst the heathen nations that may look like the heathen nations. But your father's seed line goes back to you being a so-called black, Hispanic, and Native American, one of the 12 tribes of the children of Israel. It's Shalom. It's your brother Halakia from the GMS Denver camp coming back once again through the spirit and power of Yahweh, Bahashim Yahweh Shah with another video. And this time I have another short I'm going to play. From this guy, Charleston White, man. Uh, he's nowhere nowhere uh, enlightened through the spirit and power of Yahweh Hashem Yahweh He doesn't have the Holy Spirit, but he does ask good questions that can, that can be used to edify the body, you know, because he's just a lost soul. He wants answers. He asks all these. He's one of those niggas that sit around, smoke weed, and... Man, if if so and so was real, why why this ain't happening? Why this ain't happening? And and the thing is, he's not comforted because he doesn't have the Holy Spirit of Yahweh Bashim Yahweh Shah. See, the true believers of Yahweh Shah, we have the Holy Spirit. We are we're comforted because we know the answers. We understand what the will of the Almighty Yahweh is, man. We understand judgment. We understand what Yahweh Bashim Yahweh Shah is about to bring to pass. We understand what's about to befall our enemies for all the things they've done unto us. We understand what's about to befall Babylon, the great America, for what we've suffered here in this place. And we understand what's about to happen to two-thirds of our people who refuse to repent, who want to continue on in this, in this fucking degenerate state that they've been cultivated in. And we understand all these things, you see? Now I want to I want to grab two scriptures before I get into this short. So uh, the first scripture is Proverbs twenty eight and five. It says, "What evil men understand not judgment, but they that seek Yahweh Bashim Yahweh Shah understand all things." Call Halayim Lai Yahweh Bashim Yahweh Shah. We understand what judgment is. We understand that when the child gets hit by a stray bullet, that wasn't an accident. That was a judgment from the Lord. We understand when somebody get, get hit, by, hit by a bus or somebody dies in a house fire or dies in an avalanche or dies in a plane crash, dies from food poisoning, dies from a heart attack. You see? Whatever it may be, we understand that that is judgment from the Most High Yahweh through His only begotten Son, Yahweh Shah. Evil men don't understand these things because they'll look at it, man, if God was real. Oh, perfect example. Perfect example. Boys in the hood. Boys in the hood. When them niggas in the, in the car philosoph philosoph philosophizing or philosophizing. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? And the fucking car with that damn ghetto nigga knowledge. Man, if God was real, man, how the fuck he, come, how the fuck he let little babies get smoked every night? So forth and so on. And that what Doba asked, man, God ain't real. If God was real, why he letting little kids or babies get smoked every night? Because that's judgment, nigga. That's judgment. Because what does it say? That's Job. Job 4 and 7. Remember, I pray thee, whoever perished being innocent. Or where were the righteous cut off? Exactly. Just because you see a little child get smoked or a little child die or whatever it may be, that doesn't make that child innocent. You have to understand reincarnation and it all comes together when you have the understanding of reincarnation. You understand that that soul that's in that body is paying for something did in his past life. You see? That's why you see little... Hey, women who have abortions, that was a judgment for that child, man. A child is born without limbs. I'm using children because that's as far as you can take it. Because people have a soft spot for children, right? But you have to understand that that's all judgment from the most high. A, a, a child being born blind, a child being born autism, a child being born with no limbs. 
That spirit that dwells in that body is receiving the punishment for his past actions in his past life. Nobody that perishes is innocent, man. You're paying, you're paying for your sins in some shape, form, or fashion. Another one I wanted to grab before we get into the short was Zephaniah 3 and 5. It says what? The just Yahweh is in the midst thereof. He will not do iniquity because the Most High is completely righteous, man. He's never sinned a day in his life. He's perfect. He's the epitome of the epitome of perfection. You see? Every morning, though, he bring his judgment to light. Whether I be a mother get packed, attacked by a pack of dogs or whatever it may be. That's all judgment from the Most High. And us who truly believe in Yahweh, shall we understand these things, man? You see? It says what? Every morning, doth he bring his judgment to light. He fell of not, but the unjust nor of no shame. You see? Now, I want to play this video because we're going to grab what we're going, we're going to edify. You see, bring out some points on a few things that he asked. Right? Now, he says what? Charleston White on karma. If karma was real, when does white people get theirs for slavery? See, if he had the Holy Spirit of Yahweh by Hashem Yahweh Shah, he will understand that the so-called white race, the Edomites, according to the Bible, they do have a great judgment coming upon them for what they've done unto us. The Bible tells you that the, those who put the, the so-called blacks, Hispanics, and Native Americans into slavery, they're going into slavery. And it ain't karma. That's called judgment. You see, let's hear it. Real, when do white people get theirs for slavery? You see? If karma was real, when is white people going to receive theirs for slavery, right? Well, let's see what the Bible says about that. Let's jump to the last book, Revelation 13. We'll start at verse 9. It says what? If any man have an ear, let him hear. He that leadeth into captivity shall go into captivity. There's your answer right there. The so-called white race and all the heathen nations... Who partook in the slavery of the so-called blacks, Hispanics, and Native Americans. Guess what? They're going into slavery. Matter of fact, let's see what it says in the GNT. What does it say in the GNT in this verse? 13. 9. It says what? Listen. Listen then if you have ears. Whoever is meant to be captured will surely be captured. Whoever is meant to be killed with the sword will be killed with the sword. Uh, I don't like that one. <laughs> what does the NLT say? Okay, anyone who is destined for prison will be taken to prison. And that's what's about to happen to the so-called white race. For doing what? For taking us into captivity. And another precept that we can use to back this up is Isaiah. Man, because there's so many. The most I talks about all the heathen nations being put into subjection up under us in the kingdom of heaven. That's the judgment, man. You don't understand that because you don't understand Yahweh Bashem Yahweh Shah because he hasn't given you of his Holy Spirit to understand what's written. Isaiah 14 tells us what? Isaiah 14 and 1. For Yahweh will have mercy on Jacob and will yet... Oh, Salaki, I, I, I forgot to finish that. Salaki, I can get ahead of myself. Revelation 13. And nine again, it says, well, if any man have an ear, let him hear. He that leadeth into captivity shall go into captivity. And it says what it says. Now, who led the so-called blacks, Hispanics, and Native Americans into captivity? The so-called white race, the Edomites. So what does that mean? It means that they're going into captivity. Right along with the rest of the heathen nations who all had their hand in that transatlantic slave trade. Right along with all the heathen nations that had their hand in the sub-Saharan slave trade. Because you had so-called blacks being sold over here to the Americas and also over there in the east by the, by the Arabs, man. And all of those nations who partook in that and are still profiting off of that, they're all going to pay. That's the judgment, man. That's the so-called karma for what's being done unto us. It says what? He that killeth with the sword must be killed with the sword. Here is the patience and the faith of the saints. And this is what we're patiently waiting on. Waiting for everything the most I said to play out and knowing and understanding that this is going to come to pass. Now we jump back to Isaiah chapter 14 verse 1. It says what? 
For Yahweh will have mercy on Jacob and will yet choose Israel and set them in their own land. And the stranger shall be joined with them and they shall cleave to the house of Jacob. And the reason they're cleaving unto the house of Jacob is because that they're, they're Israelites. They're strangers because what? They grew up as strangers amongst these heathen nations. You see? As the Most High promised, we would be because of our disobedience. But hey, at, at, at the end, he's going to come and save us from all these nations that we have been scattered to. To take us back into the land that he promised unto our forefathers, Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. Now verse 2 says what? And the people shall take them and bring them to their place. And the house of Israel shall possess them in the land of Yahweh for servants and handmaids. And they shall take them captives whose captives they were, and they shall rule over their oppressors. You see that? That's what's coming. Those who are oppressing us now, we're going to oppress them in the kingdom of heaven. Those who are holding us captive right now, you see, here in the land of America and all throughout the earth, guess what? When the Lord Yahweh Shah breaks us, breaks us out of this captivity, we're going to put all those who had us in captivity into captivity. And what does verse 3 say? And it shall come to pass in that day that Yahweh shall give thee rest from thy sorrow and from thy fear and from the hard bondage wherein thou was made to serve. So he's going to end our captivity. You see that? That's what's written. That's the judgment that's coming upon the so-called white race and all the other nations who partook in our oppression, man. You see? Let's get another one. Jeremiah 30 and 16. What does it say? Therefore, all they that devour thee shall be devoured. All thine adversaries, every one of them, shall go into captivity. And they that spoil thee shall be a spoil. And all that prey upon thee will I give for a prey. So all the nations, well, the, the, the chief nation, the Edomites, the so-called white race who took us into captivity, what's going to happen to them? They're going into captivity. All the nations that spoiled us and, 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 and preyed upon us. Because according to the curse, it says what? We shall go to our enemy for the one of all things. Everything that, everything that you so-called blacks, Hispanics, and Native Americans need, you have to go to the heathen nations for. You are making these heathen nations rich. They are preying upon you. You see? But they're all going to pay for that. That's the judgment. That's the so-called karma right there. Let's get another one. Let's get, uh, what is it? Psalms, yup. Psalms 148, if I ain't mistaken. No, no, 149, it's a lot. Yup. Psalms 149 and 4 says what? For Yahweh take a pleasure in his people, which are who? Who is the most highest people? Go read Exodus 3 and 10. It lets you know who the most highest people is. For Yahweh take a pleasure in his people, he will beautify the meek with salvation. Who are the meek? Those who are who are believing, uh, repenting and believing upon the Lord Yahweh Shah. Coming in a lowly, humble, contrite spirit. You see, moving in the spirit of obedience according to how the Most High told us to move. He's going to beautify the meek with salvation. Verse 5 says what? Let the saints be joyful in glory. Let them sing aloud upon their beds. Let the high praises of the Most High be in their mouth. And a two-edged sword in their hand to execute vengeance upon the heathen and punishments upon the people to buy their kings with chains and their nobles with fetters of iron to execute upon them the judgment written. This honor have all his saints. Praise ye, Yahweh Ba'ashim, Yahweh Shah. Do you hear that? We're going to put the nobles and the heathen in shackles and chains and they're going to become our slaves in the kingdom of heaven. Why? For what they've done unto us. That's the so-called karma. That is the judgment. You see? That's what it's going to be. Now, as we go back to this video, let's play a little bit more. Ooh, if karma was real, when do white people get they us for slavery? You're a bad fuck for that one. I'm going to give you that one. When do the Mexican cartel get theirs for chopping heads off and killing babies? 
When do the Crips and Bloods get theirs? When do Dirk get his? So now he's talking about the the uh, the degenerates of our people. I'm talking about the Mexican cartel, the Crips and the Bloods, these fucking uh, drill rappers, whatever they may be. He's talking about when, where's the where's the karma or the judgment for them? So you will understand that if you had what? The wisdom, knowledge, the understanding of the Most High God, Yahweh. Because the Most High tells you that he's going to put his hands upon his people, man. The Most High tells you that he's going to destroy two-thirds of you so-called blacks, Hispanics, and Native Americans here in the land of America. 66.6% .6 of you so-called blacks, Hispanics, and, and Native Americans, the Most High God, Yahweh, through his only begotten son, Yahweh Shah, is going to put you to fucking death. You see? Why? Because you're degenerates, you are worthless, you're not needed. And let's prove that's prove that to you. Let's get what is it? Uh no no no. Think about something else. I think it's a most famous statement. It is Amos. in a minute. Uh, yeah, not there it is. There it is, Amos nine and ten. So lock it. I ain't put that in a minute. Amos nine and ten says what? All the sinners of my people shall die by the sword, which say the evil shall not overtake nor prevent us. And that's what's going. That's what's coming upon the so-called cartel, the Crips and the Bloods, these fake ass wannabe gangster drill rappers. A a any of you Israelites who are not walking in the spirit of Yahweh Bashem Yahweh Shah, the sword is going to come upon you. Yahweh Bashem Yahweh Shah is going to destroy you, man. You see. All you so all uh, two thirds of you so called blacks, Hispanics, and Native Americans who are in that spirit of God bless America and America continue on continuing on forever, the most high is going to destroy you with the sword, man, by great and grievous punishments. See, Charleston White, you will understand this if you had the understand if you had the Holy Spirit of Yahweh Bashim Yahweh Shah, you don't understand it because what? It hasn't been given unto you to understand. You ha you haven't been comforted. The most high has not given you the answers, man. So Amos nine and ten, one more time. All the sinners of my people shall die by the sword, which say the evil shall not overtake nor prevent us. You see? That's what's coming upon two thirds. Another one is uh Zechariah 13 and 9. Yup. This is Zechariah 13 and 9. It says what? Let's start at 8. And it shall come to pass that in the that in all the land, saith Yahweh, it is talking about the land of America. You see Babylon the Great. Two parts therein shall be cut off and die. But the third shall be left therein. That two parts that's going to be cut off and die are you two thirds, man. Two thirds of you so called blacks, Hispanics, and Native Americans. Once again, 66.6% .6 of you so-called black, uh, so-called blacks, Hispanics, and Native Americans, the Most High is going to completely destroy you, man, for your refusal to repent, for the spirit that you're moving in. You want to walk in, you want to continue to walk in the ways of the heathen, the Most High is going to slay you, man. You see? But the third is talking about what? The remnant that's ordained to be saved. The Most High is going to keep them and protect them from all the perils that he's about to unleash upon the planet Earth. Verse 9 says what? And I will bring the third part through the fire, 
You see, and we're going through that refining process right now. And, and, and hopefully the most I pulls us up out of that nuclear destruction that's uh, bound or, or it's like ordained to happen here in Babylon the Great. It says what? Verse 9. And I will bring the third part through the fire and will refine them as silver is refined. And how do you refine silver? You put it through a, a, a great heating process to melt off that dross. You see? And it says what? And we'll try them as gold is tried. They shall call on my name, and I will hear them. I will say, it is my people. And they shall say, Yahweh Bashim, Yahweh Shai is my God. You see that? That's what's about to happen. That's the answer to your second question. This is what's coming upon the cartels and all of our people who are living in a uh, fucking degenerate state. Completely worthless and useless. You see? Now, let's get another one. <laughs> let's get uh, it's one of my favorites, man. Ezekiel 22 and 18, that's right. Ezekiel 22 and 18, it says what? Let's start at 17. And the word of the Lord Yahweh came unto me, saying, Son of man, the house of Israel is to me become dross. All they are brass and tin and iron and lead in the midst of the furnace. They are even as the dross of silver. And dross is what? Let's look, let's look at that word as dross. Of dross. Let's uh, look up. It says what? Dross, impurities, and molten metal, which is what? Silver and gold. Those are uh, molten metals, man, when you melt it down. It says what about dross? Dross is a mass of solid impurities floating on a molten metal or dispersed in the metal, such as in wrought iron. It forms on the surface of low melting point metals, such as tin, <laughs> such as tin, lead, zinc, and aluminum, or, or alloys, by oxidation of the metal for higher melting points point metals the alloys such as steel and silver oxidize impurities melt and float making them easy to pour off with wrought iron hammering and later rolling removed and later rolling removed some dross you see dross is what debris dross something regarded as worthless rope rub, rubbish and that's what two-thirds of you so-called blacks Hispanics and Native Americans are. You're worthless. You're rubbish. And the Most High is going to melt you away. Verse 19 says what? Matter of fact, it says what? They are even the dross of silver. Verse 19, Therefore, thus saith the Lord, Yahweh Ba'ashim, Yahweh Shah, because, you are be because ye are all become dross, behold, therefore, I will gather you in the midst of Jerusalem, which is a people before us a place, and that main gathering is going to be where? Here in the land of America, Babylon the Great. Verse 20. As they gather silver and brass and iron and lead and tin in the midst of the furnace to blow the fire upon it, to melt it, so will I gather you in mine anger, anger and in my fury, and I will leave you there and melt you. And that's going to be done by way of what? By way of that thermonuclear fire that the Most High is going to pour upon this place. And that answers his, 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 last, his last and final question about the judgment that's going to come upon America. Two-thirds of you so-called blacks, Hispanics, and Native Americans, you're going to partake in that. Because what? You are degenerates. You refuse to repent. So the Most High is going to destroy you. Verse 21 says what? Yea. I will gather you and blow upon you in, in the fire of my wrath, and ye shall be melted in the midst thereof. As silver is melted in the midst of the furnace, so shall ye be melted in the midst thereof, and ye shall know that I, Yahweh Ba'ashim, Yahweh Shah, have poured my fury upon you. And how is that going to happen? Because it tells you in Ezekiel 33 that what? And when it come to pass, lo, it will come. Then they shall understand that what? There was a prophet in the midst of them, man. Once that once your ass is burning up in that fire, you're gonna remember the things that the men of the Lord that uh, had told you, man. That this is the judgment coming upon you for your disobedience. You see. Now, let's play his final question. Let's see what he says. Was that karma for King Vaughn? That was judgment when for King Vaughn. When do the GDs and BDs get theirs? When do the Latin Kings get theirs? When do America get his? And America has a great judgment coming upon it as well, man. And we love to go into it. 
So you get the point of the video. He's asking all these questions because he, he doesn't have the answers. But the men of the Lord are here. We're here to answer everything, man, because the Most High has made it known unto us. You see? Oh, let's let's show you that real quick. Amos 3 and 7, it says what? Surely the Lord God will do nothing, but he revealeth his secret unto his servants, the prophets. His secret is what? His will, his intents and purposes, and the things that he do, the things that he's he's doing on this earth. It's been made known unto the men of the Lord, man. And we're making it known to the world. Because y'all don't have the answers. You can only get the answers from the, from those that the Most High has revealed unto. And he's revealed it through who? Through the prophets. The men that you see on the highways and byways, starting with the men of Great Millstone, beginning with the elder apostle to heart, and the apostles under him on down, man. You see? Now, wrapping it up with the judgment of America, because this is written all throughout the scriptures, but I want to grab one of my favorite ones. This is going to be Isaiah... 34, and we'll start at 5, it says what? For my sword shall be bathed in heaven. Behold, it shall come down upon Idumia. And when you go into this word Idumia, it's talking about who? Edom. Edom, Edomite, Idumian, descendants of Esau, which are who? The so-called white race today. The majority of you are Edomites, according to your father's sea line. You see that? So going back to Isaiah 34, it says what? For my sword shall be bathed in heaven. What is that talking about? The sword that's being bathed in heaven is who? Uh, or is what? Those thermonuclear missiles, man. 200 million thermonuclear warheads are going to rain down upon the land of America. You see? It shall come It shall come down upon Idumia, which are you Edomites. This is your judgment. This is what you have been created for, man. And that day fastly approaches. For what? For all a for all the rape, robbery, and murder, for all the atrocities that you've committed against the so-called blacks, Hispanics, and Native Americans, and for all the uh, wickedness that you've uh, sown all throughout the earth. This judgment is coming for you. It says what? And upon the people of my curse to judgment, the sword of Yahweh is filled with blood. It is made fat with fatness, and with the blood of of lambs and goats, which are you Edomites, you heathen nations. And you Israelites, the Israelites being the lambs, the heathen nations being the goats. It says, what with the fat of the kidneys of rams? For Yahweh have a sacrifice in Basra. And Basra is an ancient chief city in the land of Idumia. You see that? This Basra, America is spiritual Basra, the chief dwelling place of you Edomites. It says, what in a great slaughter in the land of Idumia. Once again, Idumia is the land of the Edomites, which is what? Babylon and Great America. Verse 7. And the unicorn shall come down with them, and the bullocks with the bulls. And their land shall be soaked with blood, and their dust made fat with fatness. And why is the Most High going to do this to this land? Verse 8 tells you why. For it is the day of Yahweh's vengeance, and the year of recompenses, for the controversy of Zion, for what's being done unto the so-called blacks, Hispanics, and Native Americans, this is why the Most High is going to destroy this land with the greatest destruction the world has ever seen. I want to see what this says in the NLT. Not NLT, but the uh, GNT, Salakia. What does it say in the GNT? Good News Translation, and that was in what? Isaiah 34. Let's see if it breaks down the right way or translates the right way. Isaiah, Isaiah 34, and what was that? Verse, uh, it says what, uh, oh, shit. <laughs> Isaiah 34 and, uh, and 5 in the GNT, it says what? Yahweh has prepared his sword in heaven, and now it will strike Edom. Those people whom he have condemned to destruction, Lord have mercy. Wow, his sword will be covered with their blood and fat, like the blood of fat and fat of lambs and goats that are sacrificed. Yahweh will offer this sacrifice in the city of Basel, was once again, which is America. He will make this he will make this a great slaughter in the land of Edom, once again, which is Babylon and Great America. The people will fall like wild oxen and young bulls, and the earth will be red with blood and covered with fat. This is the time when Yahweh will rescue Zion, which is the remnant of the nation of Israel, 
and take vengeance on their on her enemies, which begins with what? You Edomites here in the land of America. Woo! Call her like la yaha about Shemiah Verse 9 says what? The rivers of Edom will be turned into tar, and the soil will, and the soil will turn into sulfur. The whole country will burn like tar. Oh my goodness. Woo! By way of what? By way of that thermonuclear fire. It will burn day and night, and the smoke will rise from, from it forever. The land will lie waste age after age, and no one will ever travel through it again. And to back this one up, we're going to jump to Isaiah 13, one of my uh, other favorites, which goes into what? To what? The destruction of, upon America, man. The judgment that America has coming for what they've done to us so-called blacks, Hispanics, and Native Americans, the Israelites, according to the Bible, the Most High's chosen people. Isaiah 13 and 17 says what? Yahweh says, I am stirring up the Medes, which represents the Russians. To attack Babylon, which represents America. They care nothing for silver, and they are not tempted by gold. You're not going to be able to bribe your way up out of this one. You see? With their bows and arrows, will they kill the young men? Those bows and arrows represents what? The ICBM missiles, man. The thermonuclear missiles. You see? The bow being the silo, the arrow being the missile. It says, well, they will show no mercy to babies. Oh, my. <laughs> they will show no mercy to babies, and they will take no pity on children because once those missiles start to fall, like we got, like we got earlier in the lesson, who was ever perished being innocent? All those children who are going to die in that nuclear destruction, whether they be one year old, two, year, two years old, in their mother's womb, guess what? They're receiving the punishment for their past crimes and their past lives. That's judgment, Charleston White. You see, it says what Babylonia, which is America, is the most beautiful kingdom of all. It is the pride of its people. God bless America. 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 Fuck yeah. You see. I'm proud to be an American. Well, at least I know I'm free. And I probably stand up next to you. You see, it's the pride of his people. <laughs> it's the pride of his people. You Americans are the proudest nation of people on the fucking earth, man. You see, so Babylonia, America, is the most beautiful kingdom of all. It is the pride of his people. But I, Yahweh, Bashem Yahweh Shah, will overthrow Babylon as I did Sodom and Gomorrah. Exclamation point. The most I, hey, you see, how did the most I overthrow Sodom and Gomorrah? By way of fire and brimstone. You see, no one would ever live there again. No wandering Arab would pitch a tent that will pinch a tent there, coming up and set, set up uh, 7 Elevens and swarm shops. Musty ass bastards. You see, it says, what? Well, and no shepherd would ever pasture a flock there. It will be a place where desert animals live and where owls build their nests. Ostriches will live there, and wild goats will prance through the ruins. The towers and palaces will echo with the cries of hyenas and jackals, and Babylon's time has come. Her days are almost over. That's your answer, Charleston White. America's going to be destroyed. Right along with two thirds of you so called blacks, Hispanics, and Native Americans. And when you Edomites wake up from this great destruction, and we will be in the kingdom of heaven once you wake up, you will wake up with shackles and chains upon your necks, just like we did when we woke up here in America in slavery. Thus saith the Bible, thus saith Yahweh Bashim Yahweh Shah. With that, I'm going to give all praise, all honor, all glory to Yahweh Bahasham, Yahweh Shah, Bahasham Rakakwadash. Double honors to the apostles and elders of Great Millstone for teaching me this truth according to the Bible through the spirit and power of Yahweh Bahashem Yahweh Shah and a sincere peace and salutation to all you hopeful to let I am out there pushing his word in all truth and sincerity doing the work as Yahweh Bahashem Yahweh Shah has created us to do. With that, I'm going to say Shalom, Wa, Ba, Ba, Ba.